Hey, travelers. Troy's over there looking all professional this week. Yeah, I forgot to bring clothes. Well, I mean, it. you have clothes on. Yeah, I mean, I just so not. good job. Good job on wearing clothes. I'm wearing a collar today. I'm, I might take that that second button down one though. I feel underdressed. <laughs> I feel overdressed. Yeah. How about that, does that help? But I, yeah, that's great. That's good. <laughs> I like to I keep did, it casual. I did do the German thing though and put socks on with sandals. <laughs> what are you German? Yeah. Kids are doing it all over the place now, so it's okay to do what? it. What? When did kids, I miss that? Kids are doing this all the time what now. What the hell? You know, it's, it's the most kid thing ever. Like, oh, everyone says you can't do this? We're going to do it. That's how fashion works. Totally, I'm pretty sure. Totally missed that. Wow. Well, it's not, <laughs> nobody's going to be surprised that I missed the train on fashion. <laughs> it's <just> obviously. <laughs> I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a German beer stein shirt. And yeah. I've got, I, I did find out this week. I got my dad polo on. Yeah, I did find out <laughs> the cargo, cargo shorts are not in. But uh, that's still what I like to wear, and that's what I'm comfortable wearing. So, f all the kids out there. I'm still gonna wear my cargo shorts. Ah, eh, give it like three years. I'll be back in. Yeah, I'm sure. None of this stuff. So, what do we, what do we have this week for beer, Troy? Well, just uh, we we like to do these segments, and sometimes they recur, and sometimes they don't. But this one is going to be let's let's do a variety pack. I bought a variety pack, and we're gonna drink all the beers in the variety pack. That's a great idea. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. I had. We're going to do Stone today. I got their IPA Summer Variety Pack. or their, It's not all IPAs. This one isn't, but the rest of them are, so you should be nice and happy, Landon. Oh, We're just, we're just going to tickle you with some IPAs today. That's, you're a wonderful, wonderful human being. Yeah, and I was like, you know, we could do some barrel-aged stouts out in the hot heat, or... I would rather, <laughs> but here we are, doing more IPAs. Yeah, well, we're doing Stone. You know, they're probably, they're obviously a West Coast brewery. Uh, one of the OG West Coast IPA producers, Stone IPA. If if you haven't had it, it's worth a drink. Um, you know th- they've been making beer since 1996. I learned that on the website about a minute ago. They've so. been in the news lately, so yeah. that's it's relevant. It's relevant. We like you to can be actually, relevant. You can actually search for that. It is it is relevant. Yeah, we um, can talk about that later, but for sure, for sure. But as of now, I'm thirsty. So let's uh, let's. There is uh, this is the Tangerine Express Hazy IPA. Yeah. This baby's got some floaties in it. Yeah, I uh, it's got tangerine in it. You don't say tangerine. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what's floating around in there. And uh, yeah, it smells like tangerine mixed with beer. So so far, a good start. Tastes like an IPA. Yeah. Now, what I always associate with stone beers are a nice dry finish to their IPAs. Yeah, this, and this is one, juicy. This starts out juicy, but to me, it, I don't get much on the like, the finish. Dries up pretty quick for me. No, it's awful resiny on the on the back end for my my palate. Yeah, I'm not getting much. I get a little resin for sure, but not not a ton. But that's almost like a classic IPA that they're trying to make into a, a juicy hazy. I you don't you don't get a ton of tangerine. You see it floating in there. I smell and I see it more than I taste it. But you don't really taste it. No. The hops certainly overpower. Yeah, there's a uh, it is there's a heavy hop presence. I would say that this has like one of those IPAs that still has uh that hop aggressiveness to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Surly in our area is always well known for having You know, we we yeah, we had talked about Surly in the past, but Surly really is kind of malted more of their IPAs, I think their newer ones. The the old, you know, standbys, the furious and whatever, those I think those are still heavily hopped, but the abrasive. Yeah. The abrasive, but you know, the newer ones, they've taken a less aggressive Yeah, you don't get that that harsh bitterness right. to and it. This has that harsh that that bite of bitter. Kind of miss that though, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure you do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the, those are the IPAs I got into when I. Like, it makes me almost think of like Green Flash. All the Green Flash IPAs were so aggressively bitey on their bitterness. You know, I've been trying for years to get to get into IPAs. I just don't. I just can't. Uh, I even bought. Speaking of variety packs, I even bought uh, the variety pack from Lakefront. This last week, it has an IPA in it. It has their IPA. Yeah, that Lakefront IPA. It's malty. It's probably yeah. one of the maltiest IPAs you right. can get. Right, I can handle that one. <laughs> You're like, this one, I'm... That, <laughs> that is, one, that one's all right. That's like the quintessential Midwest IPA like, I'm a, profile. I'm a Midwest guy, what can I say? I would say like the Lakefront IPA, Surly Furious are like two great examples of that, that mid... What has now been dubbed the Midwest IPA. 
that malt, malt strong malt backbone whereas this is definitely a west coast in heart you know this, this oh absolutely yeah absolutely it's plenty of west coast flavor there <sighs> not uh not something i would gravitate towards but those of you that like harsh ipas out there i'm more than certain you'll like this one if Stephanie was here, she would be all about this. She'd be all the wife. About the wife loves a good bite to her IPA. Scorpion Bowl IPA. I uh, can only imagine that this is going to be worse. I so the, the goal with this beer. Well, first of all, look how clear that guy is. Holy cow! I almost forgot that IPAs could be clear. <laughs> that's that's the state it, of the world. It almost looks like a golden lager. Yeah, I mean, you, that you is look crazy. At that, it's got the really small bubbles in it. Not much on the nose. Is, what is there supposed to be? This is supposed to be a juiciest Scorpion IPA. Bowl IPA. So, what? What? If memory serves me correctly, it's supposed to be as juicy of an IPA as a West Coast IPA. You can make it without adding fruit. I'll be darned. Yeah, this actually just tastes like a great West Coast. Yeah, it's not as harsh. I think they have some mosaic and citra in there that they definitely dialed up the citrus and that to kind of balance out that that West Coast bite. So you almost get a real, you know, we, once again, to, to bring everything full circle like I constantly do, you're always seeking balance in beer. Yeah. And yep. uh, this is a uniquely balanced beer of hops. Like, there is a lot of hop flavor in there. Yeah, there, well, it's a yes. whole The whole bouquet of pretty, pretty much the whole thing is a hop flavor. Yeah. <laughs> this would actually be a great beer to teach someone, like, about different, how to, like, or it would be, like, a good beer to test someone with and have them, like, try to pick apart the hops. It's almost got a little bit of a tropical yep. flavor to it. You know, what, what you would consider, you know, quote unquote tropical. Mm. But it but it, it, it starts and finishes very quickly. Ugh, this beer is making me happy right now. I'm str- I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm struggling over here. <laughs> I just want to put my feet up and drink more of this. Yeah? You here I'll give it uh, back to you. This is another another whistle You wet. uh you go right ahead. I've not had the scorpion bowl yet. And uh, I'm kind of certain regretting that, drinking more of it when I had the chance. I'm sure it won't surprise anybody. I haven't had any of these. <laughs> um, probably never will again. Never will again. Yeah. You know what I really like about Stone? What's arrogant that? Bastard. If you've never had the Arrogant Bastard. Oh, I love Arrogant oh, Bastard. Yeah. What an angry fun beer. That's a That's a great way to put it. Yeah. It's like, I want a beer that's going to be kind of mad at me while I drink it. And it is. It's like being married. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, that's who was just trying to call me. I'm sure my phone yeah. also went off. I'm sure my wife just called me. Yeah. <laughs> do they don't, not know I'm Don't they know that... Drinking time. ...that we do this every week? I don't know. I don't think my wife really takes uh, a whole lot of interest in what I'm doing. She doesn't watch this show? No. <laughs> She's, she sees plenty of me. Oh. <laughs> Why? Why watch you on YouTube when you can see you in person? Why why have to relive that again? Yeah. Or, I mean, Stephanie has probably heard me talk about beer more than any other human on this planet. You don't say? Yeah. Yeah. And she's uh, not overly excited to get more. You know, I will admit to you that I, I talked more about beer when we weren't uh, socially distancing and not being, uh, being a little more timid about going to bars. And, um, you know, I, I will say that it's it's a little easier to go out now. Yeah, because there's a lot of more a lot more safety precautions in place. However, it is nothing like it used to be. No, no, for sure. And we should also say that the Scorpion Bowl was seven point five percent alcohol, and that one I think was six point six. So like these aren't small beers. Right, right. Yeah. No, the the Tangerine. What was the the Tangerine was uh, six point seven. Yeah. Yeah. So these aren't Stone doesn't make typically when they make an IPA they make an IPA you know they're not they make sure that yeast eats up all that sh- <laughs> all those sugars that's where that dryness probably yeah. comes from because you know if you're looking at a beer and this is just you know fun beer facts sugar obviously is what the yeast eats to convert into alcohol and then it yep. farts out the CO two as it right. does that yep so the more sugar you have and that's why some of the, like we had a, that six oh eight beer that blew up in your face. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't watched that episode, it's worth a watch. It's There's fun. also a clip out there that's just the beer exploding in my face. <laughs> and Troy going, <laughs> Me laughing it at was, you. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the best part about that, well, the, what we're finding with a lot of these more East Coast milkshake IPAs is that they put so much sugar in them. 
And once those beers get warm again, that yeast has reactivated. And then it reconsumes that, uh, that, that starts eating the sugar, and then the can obviously explodes. So. Yep. yep. So that's, a, I guess, a, a good reason to drink West Coast. Not a problem. Do you think that would be something they could remedy with changing the yeast? A yeast uh, that dies easier, or I don't even I, maybe less sugar in the beer. Well, I'm I'm all for that, but <laughs> that's my first suggestion. <laughs> like, if you have so much sugar, your yeast like dies. There's in it. something wrong. Yeah, that or if they let I me mean, also if they were let to eat the yeast eat all the sugar, they'd end up with probably like an 18 percent beer. So right, I don't even know what what I would recommend to those folks. Hey, go go for the 18 <laughs> percent. Go for 18. Go go for broke. I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what Dogfish Head did with their. Uh, 120 i mean that's a huge beer and that's just you know right. that sugar sometime or that sugar it could overtake the yeast and kill it so that is a concern yep when you're making a high uh high uh, abv beer like that but this one is a lager now landon yeah it's buena Vesa. oh yeah you buena, said buena Vesa salt and lime lager you said so that's really a nice. mexican lager yeah well, I mean, you know, Mexican lagers have kind of become a style now. I mean, I wouldn't think anyone 10, 20 years ago would have really considered a you style, know, but it's almost got the color of Coors Light. Yeah, that is a that is a crisp, it's a very straw yellow. Yes, it, well, it's a very light straw straw yellow. Yeah, it smells like it's lager. Got a, it's got a delightful smell on it, though. Yeah, it smells like uh, this lager smells like a a, a lager you would drink in like a beach and an all inclusive. Oh, I could I could drink that thing all day. Memories are flooding back. I'm not a beach guy. Probably won't surprise anybody out there. Yeah, not a beach guy. I like a good beach. I uh, I hate sweating. <laughs> that's uh, and that's all you really do on a beach. Yeah, sweat. I, I like to sweat. Clean out the pores. That's how you get the beer out. Man, it takes 15 minutes. I've I've got it. Gotten a got a whole day sweat in. So this but, one's a little less than alcohol, I believe. Oh, uh, right? it's it's uh, four point seven. Mm-hmm. So, way less. Is there salt in here then? Yeah, salt and lime. Definitely get the lime. I get the, a little bit of that salt. Almost dries it out towards the finish. You get the salt because only because I come from Nowheresville in the Midwest. Yeah. Where, back in the day, if you got a tap beer. They put a little salt in it. You put a little salt in it. Yeah. And that, you know, and that would that would get the bubbles a little more, you know, and then mm. and then if you wanted a I'll if you wanted a Yeah, it's it's really good. Yeah, I'm actually really enjoying this. If you wanted a tomato beer, then you just got tomato juice with it and you put that in your beer. One of my coworkers, I had not tried this. One of my coworkers. He actually watches the show. What's up, Jimmy? Um, he highly recommended this. So, I went and got some and I was like, "Yeah, that's a that's a very tasty lager. You know, the next time I go out on a boat, if they uh, if they sell that individually, I might, I might I get you that. You buy six packs yeah. of it. Yeah. You know, that salt is actually a real old tradition to put into beer. I think it kind of started in Germany, and you see that culture. You know, like I said, um, Mexico has really kind of embraced their own little beer culture now. Right. Yeah. You know, you get Mexican lagers usually have a little salt in them, or they're like a Vienna. Yep. A lot of Vienna type loggers coming out of Mexico. So I don't know, it's kinda cool watching them identify their, their own styles. And and believe it or not, we actually have uh for those of you that are in the Wisconsin, Minnesota area. We have a and I, I know there's a lot of you that, that watch uh that are in those areas. If not travelers. Yeah. Tap yeah. traveling. There's uh there's a place in the cities, Minneapolis, called Ladonia. I'm and glad they, you they remember mixed, the name of it because yeah. I can I can never remember the name of that. Oh, it's it's a delightful place. I've and, been there. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have. We took a bus there yeah. before. Great people, really great beer, <laughs> fun atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. I just cannot remember the name. <laughs> and and of course, it's one of those breweries that's next to a distillery, or at the very least, it was next to a distillery when we visited. So, mm. uh, haven't been over there in a while, unfortunately. Huh. Why is uh, that, Landon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why <laughs> is that? I don't know. Lazy. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say this might be one of the best loggers I've had in a spell. That is really good. I'm enjoying this. And one. actually, the more you, it's been a, a, a bit since I've had a sip. You get a little salt in the yeah, cheek. Yeah, that salt is kind yeah. of a, a little bit of a ninja in there. Yeah, it's just hiding out. The lime is definitely throughout the entire sip, but that salt it also kind of makes you want more. Yeah, which is what well, salt. It's brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> damn you, Stone. <laughs> And we also put this in the middle because that way we w- – normally I would have started this with this. But it's a I'm great like, palate cleanser. We need a little bit of an IPA palate yeah. cleanser to yeah. go into the last guy. You don't You don't want IPA fatigue. That is a thing. 
I know. Yeah. Yeah, I I've get it. it. I get it immediately. <laughs> you go, <laughs> it's uh it's not avoidable, unavoidable. I I agree. One more and we got 5 minutes to go while Troy's opening this beer. For those of you that want to know a little bit more about the stone controversy, you can go, actually just go out and uh, probably even type into Google about it started. Stone. It started with them suing Coolers for the because Coolers has Keystone, and at one point, or uh, yeah, Coolers Brewing owns the brand Keystone. At one point, Keystone they really focused on the the stone as yep. opposed to the key. The, the latest one's not not so much that, and I, and yeah. I I understand that that one with uh, Molson Coors yeah, and, and all yeah. that. That's uh, punching the, up. The latest one is uh, is something that you don't normally see. It's a, a small brewery just kind of getting all crazy and and a, like attacking personally uh, people that work at Stone, which is in, in my That's mind never it's cool. just it's totally it's, unfathomable and and uh, I can never imagine doing that. No, it's it's awful. <laughs> Um, so you can read the owner of Stone. He put a whole uh, post out about it. You can kind of read both sides and decide for yourself. Last time I heard, which is what you should do these days. Just just so you're aware. During quarantine, my wife was binge, wa- binge watching uh, Chopped, and the owner of Stone's on an episode of Chopped. I'll be damned. Yeah, yeah. I just watched Chopped last night. So this one is Tiki Escape IPA. This is the exclusive to the variety pack, yeah. so that's why I saved it for last. I'm once again loving these clear beers. I just, Sabro, just, Sabro, and Mosaic. I've been hearing more of Sabro. Did we do the Sabro Tooth Tiger? I we did. Yeah. So Surly, this is kind of yeah. be fun to. We did a one from Surly's take on it, which I would say is quite possibly the, one of the best IPA breweries in our area. Now we're going to do Stone, which is one of the OG yeah. IPA styles. Yeah. We'll see how they t- handle this. New, they're, exciting. They're, again, kind of a tropical nose on it. I think it's like a tropical stone, stone fruit flavor profile that comes with the Sabro sure, hop. Sure, so That would be a, a good analysis, Landon. Thank you very much, Troy. I've drank enough beer. Hopefully by now I've learned something. Yeah, that's everyone's like, how do you get good at beer? And I'm like, you just drink you just a drink lot. drink it. Yeah, you just, you just go buy a bunch. <laughs> you drink it, then you're like, okay. Go buy more, and you're like, well, this one was different. I wonder yeah. why. Right. Go buy more, drink those. <laughs> Eventually, you're, you'll learn what you like and what you don't like. This is oddly similar to the the Sober Tooth Tiger from Surly, so that must be a, not just their take on it. Must but just be the hop. The, how that hop? Because this yep. that one from Surly was a lot heavier in the color yep. and in the body, whereas yes. this one is. God damn! Look how clear that, that is. That is that is clear. It is it is lager clear. I yeah, mean, this, this this is this could be a Budweiser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. absolutely. And it, this is almost Miller Lite because uh, Coors Light has that that you know. You drink way more Coors Light than I ever. Yeah, tell me about it. Uh-uh. But I would say it's like a lot of stone fruit, tropical fruit. It's a heavier fruit flavor, not like uh It is not citrus. Nope, not citrus. Not, it's not almost melon, um, plummy. Not, yeah, it's it's a heavier fruit. I believe they always use the word stone fruit, but if I use the word stone fruit, it's just. I I don't actually know what stone fruit means. <laughs> I would say more of a darker fruit. Yeah. Something something that's less uh yeah, citrusy. Oh, that is real good. It is really good. Yeah. I know you don't like IPAs landing, but solid episode of, of IPAs. Solid so. episode of IPAs <laughs> and uh don't don't fear trying, you know, a variety pack. That's that's probably the that's biggest one, thing. To me, I, nothing makes me happier than getting a variety pack and working my way through it and really getting to know the brewery. Yeah. Cuz a brewery can make one beer good. Can they make a, a Can they make several good several that's, good beers? Yeah. Is there a house flavor? It, right. It's a good time to learn how to how to identify those things. You know, like what? what how do they approach it? I guess. And yep. obviously, all of these IPAs, I would say, had one thing in common: it's they have that West Coast aggressive bitterness. They certainly they, do. Every one of them has that undertone to them. Which, if you don't like that, I guess. Eh. Yeah. But uh, if you do, right? Eh? Yeah. Eh? I appreciate you bringing these beers over. Remember to check us out on all the social medias. If you haven't already done it, subscribe here on YouTube. Find us on Facebook, Instagram. I've done some things on Twitter probably three times in the last six months. Uh, and if you're watching this, uh, hopefully you're watching it with a beer. Let us know in the comments what beer you're drinking while watching. Yeah, absolutely. We love that. I literally would love to hear that. Absolutely. And until then, we will definitely see you next week, everybody. Next Prost. beer is on us. Prost. It's a lie. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.